So in the previous video, we looked at QTP checkpoints. We inserted some QTP checkpoints and we verified both pass and fail state of those checkpoints. So I hope that you got a pretty good or a decent idea about QTP and checkpoints. So again, I have saved this script, the previous script of QTP checkpoint as QTP checkpoints so that you will also have a copy of this script and all of those files as well as the object repositories. So in this video we will discuss parameterization. So what parameterization is exactly? What it is is, is you can see in this script, as you can see in the script, we have basically navigated to facebook.com and then we entered some email ID, which is hi at yahoo.com. And then we entered some password. In this case, it's set secure. And that is the reason that we can't see the password. So parameterization is all about parameterizing all of this data, all of the input data. In this case, we have two input data. One is email and the second is the password. So we can parameterize. In this case, we have constant values, a hi at yahoo.com as the email ID, and that's the constant value for email ID. Parameterizing is all about using dynamic and multiple sets of value, using multiple sets of data. So if I want to, now if I want to test the login function functionality of Facebook using two different, say two different email IDs and two different passwords, right? So what exactly do I have to do? The first thing that may come to your mind is that you can copy the exact code. I can do a control C. Okay. Let's say this is part one and this is part two. By the way, when I write part one and part two, I did, as you notice, I have a single quotation. I begin my line with a single quotation. And that's the reason that this line is commented, which means that QTP won't try to read this line. This is just for my information. So if you were, if you want to just write some notes into the codes, if I do not put this, if, then as you can see, this is part one, became converted into a blue font. So blue font means in this case, at least for my code, I have all of my code in blue font. That means QTP will assume that this is also part of the codes, but it's not. So this is just for my notes. So I'll put a single quote, same thing here, part one, part two. So just for my, for my notes. So we will discuss in detail about that a little more later on. So part one is this, and let's put part two. Same thing. I just copy the same thing into part two. What I want to do is test, test the login functionality of two different kinds of invalid ID. So let's say part one is hi at yahoo.com and password is, well, let's change the password. So instead of set secure, so just set. So let's just put one, two, three, four, five, six. Close the quotation. And part two, let's say we want to do hi at And we can also name this part one email ID as email ID part one at yahoo.com just for testing purposes. And we want to do that the second time. We want to put part two at yahoo.com. And also we will change the password set secure to set Let's put a different password, 78910. 
Okay. And let's try to execute this. Okay. So let me just close the browser before I start, before I start running this script. So we close it. So you'll know exactly what I'm doing. So this script basically tries to navigate to facebook.com, enter part one at yahoo.com, and is checking for the checkpoint. But the checkpoint will fail because it's checking for the email address. It's checking for the email address to be valid, but this time the error message that we have is different than what we are expecting. So let me just stop this test and let's take out the checkpoint from the script. So line number 10 is the checkpoint. So I just took that out and I took out the checkpoint. So this time we're getting a different error message and QTP won't recognize this error message. Okay? So instead, we can put a different checkpoint. We can click on run. I'm sorry, click on record and insert checkpoint, standard checkpoint, and click on click on this value here and with the hand sign and click OK. Click OK again. And the checkpoint was inserted. So we replaced the checkpoint with a new checkpoint, with a new error message. So we'll just stop the recording, close the browser, and we want to have the same checkpoint, line number 10. We want to have the same checkpoint for part two. So after the login, we also want to replace this checkpoint, the second one. This was the old checkpoint. And I want to replace it with the new one. So your account is temporarily blocked. So. You, we have part one and part two, same code, same checkpoints, everything is the same except we have different data. So in this case, we have part one at yahoo.com. Second time we have part two at yahoo.com. So we want QTP to check the login functionality with two different email IDs and two different passwords. So in a quick, we'll run this test. So part one, yahoo.com, close the browser and check the checkpoint. Now let's see what happens. So now it tries to execute part two. It goes to facebook.com and then, as you can see enters part two at yahoo.com. And this time it has a, a different checkpoint. So this checkpoint will fail the second time because it has a different this time I have a different error message. So for good, I can just delete my checkpoint for both part one and part two because I don't need those checkpoints. So using different email IDs are giving me different checkpoints. So QTP will get confused. So I took off all those checkpoints. So this is the script. This script, basically what it does, it again, it checks the login functionality with different sets of data. So let's run this test again without any checkpoints. Navigating to facebook.com, entering part one at yahoo.com, closing the browser. Then it will go to part two. So navigating again to facebook.com, entering part two at yahoo.com, and the password that we have provided is so 78910, and, and it will try to close the browser. So it actually did close the browser. Good. We have just used multiple sets of data. So why do we even need parameterization? So in this case, I have tested the the login functionality of Facebook with two different kinds of or two different email IDs and passwords. What if I need to test the same login functionality with hundreds and thousands of sets of data? 
then I have to copy this same code again to part three, part four, part five, part six, and so on and so on and so on and so on. So we have to we have to use the same we have to copy the same code over and over. And this will take a lot of time. So QTP actually has a better idea. QTP has something called parameterization that we can use and we can use the same code but we can parameterize the value. So the same code we can use, we can parameterize the value. Let me close part two and let's just have part one. Okay and I can have this same code I will make I will not make any changes to the code and I can still test the application with multiple sets of data. This is called parameterization, and in the next video, we'll look deeper into it.